Hey guys, Badabing here. Today we'll be looking at the Scar Light Next Gen Recoil AEG from Tokyo Marui. Don't worry, I haven't gone completely mainstream. Gas guns are still way better than these will ever be. This is a rifle which I bought for myself, and it stands as the first AEG I've bought in ages. Well, one that I intend to keep anyway. Having said that, it wouldn't surprise me if I probably end up selling it, you know, because gas guns interest me a hell of a lot more. Shout out to Wolf Armories for giving me a great deal on this thing, so thanks to those guys. You know what to do, link is in the description if you want to get yourself something cool just like this. Well, my coffee is about ready to go, as well as this tasty Belgian waffle, so now that I've made you all crave coffee and waffles, let's do this. The Tokyo Marui Scar L has been around for roughly 10 years, and it's enjoyed overwhelming success from the airsoft community. The TM Recoil Shock family has a large following across the planet, from people that have migrated to it from their modest beginnings, and in some cases, the more extravagant end of airsoft. So they seem to have caught the eye from players at both ends of the spectrum. There must be something special about these things, but what? The Scar arrives in a rather plain box, which is unusual for TM. Included with your new blaster is the standard accessories that TM provide. BB loader, barrel cap, cleaning rod, iron sight tool, manuals, and sample BBs. The rifle itself. It's effing gorgeous. I've been messing around with ARs for far too long, so this is a breath of fresh air. Even though it shares many of its features, it's still the difference which I'm enjoying. A lot of my regulars know that I am no big fan of the FDE colour, I just don't like it. However, on the selection of platforms, a colour can suit them very well, and this is true of the carbine sat in front of me. Many brands tend to get the tone completely wrong, coming off in a golden champagne colour. The shade TM have created comes off really nicely, and all in a matte finish. The look of the scar is completed with some FNH Mark 16 trades. Nice. The construction of the rifle is excellent. As the upper receiver is metal, it allows the entire frame to give you that rigid feeling in the hand. Its monolithic rail is correct 20mm mil spec. My genuine Elk Inspector DR locks onto it beautifully. The arm's throw levers swing over to bite the upper with just the right amount of resistance to a perfect lockup. The weight of the rifle is decent, with an even distribution for good balance. I have seen many cases online where the buttstocks have snapped off, and also the plastic button that activates the folding feature, this has been known to break as well, so just be aware that while it is a solid rifle, it's still a toy gun. At the front end we find the industry standard 14mm negative thread hiding beneath the 3 prong scar flash hider. On the gas block they've replicated the adjustable gas regulator, which serves no purpose but TM have an eye for details. I'm quite impressed by the flip up iron sights. The front iron folds away nicely, and the rear, oh the rear, it's superb. It combines the usefulness of the M4A1 style peep sight in a fairly slender profile. The options you get from it are likely just as good as the ones you'd find on the real thing. The controls on the SCAR are all replicated correctly, and most of them are ambidextrous. The selector switch is definitely better than the one found on their ARs, because it flows into each mode easily and firmly clicks into place. If you're looking to perform training drills, this positive operation is everything you'll be looking for. The charging handle can be repositioned to the user's preference, left or right side. Withdrawing the handle reveals the hop-up wheel through the ejection port, and even this features well-defined heavy calibrations for accurate hop-up tuning. The magazines slide and lock into the mag wheel firmly and smooth. The 82 round magazine is in the same FDE colour that matches the rifle. As you may know, regular AEG magazines are not directly compatible unless you have an adapter installed. What's great about these is that not only do they feed and fire every last BB that's been loaded, without leaving one or two inside the chamber, 
but you can reduce the total capacity to 30 rounds instead of 82 by removing the shell and sliding this tab over. Like the real scar, the bolt catch is only available on the left side. The great thing about the Recoil shock family is that it is a functional component, and once the rifle has emptied the magazine, the catch will flick outwards and the gearbox cycling will cease fire. The rifle will not dry fire like most conventional AEGs, and to begin firing again, you'll have to use a realistic weapon manipulation to resume. Insert fresh mag, push the bolt release, and this will click the paddle inwards, and the rifle will be ready to shoot once more. The folding stock is the subject of many jokes among the gun community. When a comparison to the Ugg boot was first coined, I had no idea what an Ugg boot was. Yeah, I had to Google it. While the similarities are completely justified, it doesn't take away from the fact that it is a comfortable little stock. For me it is anyway, I like it. As usual, I really like to use ABS plastic, and this begins to creak and groan as it gets older. The space within that stock doesn't give you much room to work with for your power needs, and these AEGs still come with the mini Tamiya connector, which are considered relics these days. I'm not into electrics anymore, so I personally couldn't care less what kind of plugs they have. If it works with what I have, then that's fine by me, I'm not fussy. Lastly, the pistol grip is the typical A2 style, which is mostly hated across the board, and regrettably there are no aftermarket grips that are specifically designed for the TM Scar family. I might be wrong, but there seems to be incompatibility issues when users try to install their favourite third party grips, due to the form of the low receiver, although in some cases people have successfully altered those grips to fit. From front to the back, you're getting a well-built gun that has impeccable attention to detail. Let's take a step forward to the performance of the SCAR and quickly go over the results from the Chrono. With my hop-up adjusted to sling point threes, the FPS comes in from 290 to 299 on point twos. If you're new to Tokyo Maruri airsoft guns and think this is way underpowered, Keep in mind, they only produce their products for their own host nation's market, and they have to fall within their certain regulations for their gun's output. So you'll only really see sub-300 readings from factory models. It's just the way it is. Across 30 shots, we see an average of 294 FPS. If you're used to shooting basic AEGs with no recoil, TM's line of next-gen recoil AEGs are certainly an enhanced experience compared to primitive electric guns. The SCAR delivers a tiny thump as it shoots. It doesn't feel any heavier than the HK416 Delta I reviewed in the past. In fact, the SCAR feels lighter in its operation. If you're like me, and coming from the opposite end of the recoil spectrum with gas playback rifles, you probably wouldn't even class this as recoil, just mild vibrations from a video game controller, and that's what it feels like to me. It's something of nothing. Stab me in the leg. You'd probably find more benefit from its bolt stop feature than its so called recoil engine. I used to own the WE gas blowback SCAR, and even for a gas gun, the reciprocating charging handle can ferociously bite your thumb if it happens to be in the way. Getting hurt by the Marui SCAR charging handle isn't going to be an issue for you. You'll likely do more damage to it, rather than it do damage to you. The charging handle is made from plastic, and it's connected to a flimsy metal mock bolt carrier. When I'm firing the rifle, I cannot help but feel massively underwhelmed. Like, is that it? I'm not saying it's totally boring to use, what I'm saying is that it's coma inducing. Well, maybe that's a bit harsh. Nah, that's my thoughts on it anyway. You can't get away from the issues with the gearbox locking up on rapid semi-auto fire unless you install a MOSFET. 
If you like to spam the trigger on semi-auto, the constant threat of this floor is always going to be there. I'm not really bothered by it. You, on the other hand, meh, you might want to eliminate this quirk with a MOSFET. On fully automatic, it happily rattles away in your hands at a steady pace. It's no high rate of fire gun. I like it though. The word I choose to describe how the SCAR operates is quite simply smooth. Whether running it on single shot or fully automatic, every cycle is simply effortless. The gearbox turns over so well. I'm using a small 7.4 volt LiPo and it ticks over beautifully. Using this in game and for a Gaskin guy, eh, it's not too bad. Burning through ammo to a dead click on empty is the very reason for my purchase. If I'm looking for an easy day away from gas guns, I can maintain the thrill of the rifle going dry and experience the sudden rush as I perform a reload. As an alternative to the popular AR pattern rifles, I love how easily employable the SCAR is. Its controls are instantly familiar and simply running the rifle is an overall pleasant experience. Rocking it like a training gun, flicking off the safety, running drills, it's dynamite, it flows. If this is the prime directive for your purchase, you are going to see a lot of value in it. At extended ranges, the stream of BBs floated off in the general direction, and I was surprised to have some of those BBs connect. From my experience, the maximum range capable of a completely stock gun with .3s is about 50 meters. You can see the BBs reaching the extent of their usefulness at this distance, and when you are trying to ping someone here, your chances of success on semi-auto, yeah, they're slim. Of course, you can use higher volumes of fire and move on. Because the rifle is firing at the speed that it does, the BBs do take a while to get out there, and when they do, the spread opens out. This is where the SCAR could use some help if you want to compress that cone effect. On today's airsoft battlefields, you won't feel too inadequate with this rifle, but that depends entirely on what kind of people you're likely to be going up against. There is a massive upgrade trend in airsoft, so depending on where you go, you may be starting on the back foot. Now, testing the accuracy by hitting the usual A4 paper at 20 meters. The SCAR is gathering a collection of holes mostly within the space of my hand, with some deviations close to the main bunch of groupings. The only hits I had off the paper were a few flyers, and those could have easily have been feathered by licks of crosswind, but apart from that, all subsequent shots fell into a consistent pattern. This is normal for a bone stock TM recoil, here's the same thing with the 416 Delta. Bottom line is, if you play your part by using good BBs and a well adjusted hop up, it'll produce acceptable results. At this distance, BBs punching their way into a target the size of a fist is good enough for me, and this bunch of tidy holes right here are wonderful. 27 on paper out of 30, typical TM quality. The Tokyo Marui SCAR L Next Generation Recoil AEG. Round of applause for just how good this rifle looks. You've got to admit, it's sexy, both in FDE and in black. Furthermore, the coating they've used on the upper, in particular, is excellent because my Alcan hasn't scarred the finish at all. TM's attention to detail is on point. FN Hirschstall markings are slick. Its accurate and well-defined metal upper receiver is the rigid backbone of this rifle and it is solid. Every function this rifle has is superbly constructed, its handling oozes quality. The hop-up adjustability is accurate and stiff. Shooting action is smooth, out-of-the-box accuracy is acceptable, reliability is generally very high, Japanese quality control is the best. 
Internal upgradability is high on these recoil AEGs, and external accessorizing includes SCAR specific rail extensions and replacement stock options. Lastly, the bolt stop on empty is the gameplay enhancement that makes this SCAR stand above all other electric SCARs. Now, what's bad about this rifle? The cargo hold for the batteries is extremely limited, so keep in mind the stock's cramped storage space. The stock and charging handle are two of the weakest parts of the rifle, and I have seen these break. Regarding the stock, the button or the plastic frame it locks into are the ones to look out for. The stock as a whole tends to be a bit creaky as well. The A2 grip isn't for everybody, and at the time of making this video there doesn't seem to be any other SCAR lower receiver spec grips. Magazines are proprietary to the AR style and GRS family, and immediately not compatible with regular AEG magazines without an adapter. The long range capabilities isn't the best, now it can lift point threes perfectly, and possibly heavier loads too. The threes seem to pepper the ground just past 50 meters. While it doesn't necessarily bother me, the lower FPS may frustrate others, so upgrading to your preferable speed can be a costly endeavor. The internals are built to operate perfectly within its own parameters. The faster you go, the harder you put a strain on the stock internals, and before you know it, you've invested funds way beyond a simple spring. The rifle can be fairly expensive anyway, depending on where you go, and if the stock performance which I've presented to you in this review is underwhelming in your eyes, well, that's a deep rabbit hole you could be getting yourself into. The recoil? Isn't. It's a light vibration. Other TM Next Gens or other brand electric blowbacks do this better. Coming from gas blowbacks with an instantaneous trigger response and follow-up shots, the gearbox locking up on rapid semi-auto fire is something I get frequently. A MOSFET should cure this, so if you want that sharp response every time, that is what's recommended. There you have it folks, that's my TM SCAR review. Ultimately, while I really do like the SCAR platform, I can't help but feel no real love for it. Truth is, it's probably because I am a gas gun guy. Think of it from my point of view, it's like having a stunning girlfriend, without having a single thing in common. Sure, she looks great on your arm when you walk into a room, but without that connection, it's just empty, and there's no real spark to ignite any real passion. Ignoring the attractive externals, what this delivers, in-game, on the ground level, for me, it's nothing to get excited about. Sorry folks, you turn up my honest reviews and here it is, it won't blow you away, it's very ordinary. It's both four to my death. I see comments on forums and Facebook groups saying that they're amazing from the word go, outclassing rival AEGs they happen to be going up against. Well, I'm sad over here wondering, are they really going up against other airsofters or just destroying their nephew's nerf party? Anyway, I see no such superiority here, it's simply a middle of the road performer. Whether this would be sufficient to you comes down to your own preference. I can totally see why people get in there and juice it up, making it the best it can be. So why did I buy it? Well, partly was because it was merely a frame to mount my Elk Inspector DR. Ah, kidding. Or am I? The bolt stop feature is the fundamental reason why I purchased this, and at a time when I dropped the Sistema PTW, and at that time I felt the requirement to maintain a single AEG position within my armory, and it was paramount that it follow the same realistic operation as a PTW, so I arrived here. Yeah, big group. The bolt stop function is the benefit that it has over traditional electrics, and I feel this is where they truly shine. If you're looking for an electric gun platform to really invest in, and want something more than what your typical AEGs give you, take a look at the Next Gen Recoil Shock series. This could be right up your street. Thanks for watching the video my friends, I hope you were able to get something out of it. If you liked the video, why not hit the thumbs up, and if you haven't already subscribed, join me and become notified when my next video goes live. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram if you'd like to see regular updates, so until next time, look after yourselves. Thanks.